I have been a midwife for about 24 years and attending births for about 28 years. And I um, got the bug um, after the birth of my first daughter that I, um, I worked with a nurse midwife and really just my eyes were opened to um, just what a complex, deep, transforming experience it was and I had my background a bachelor's degree in psychology and um, was very interested in just dynamic transitions and how people grow through life experiences and then birth was suddenly like oh that's the life transition that um, really drew me. I went to UCSF that had a program where you could become a nurse in a year and then you could go on and get a master's degree in um, and a certificate in women's health and um, midwifery. So I did that in, graduated in 97 after having also my second daughter. And I started working first in the hospital setting and then in the home setting. And now I'm also working in a birth center. So just... In any setting, but in a, specifically in a hospital would really be um, for someone who would partner with them and take them on this journey and be um, a knowledgeable member of the care team, but also involve them and involve the family and center it on the needs of the family. While they might still want to have an epidural, they might still want to be in a hospital setting, that might be the place that they feel the safest, that might be the only place that they feel that they can afford to access care. Um, but they really want that soft touch of communication and education and um, decision-making, shared decision-making. Yeah, the costs can vary widely for midwifery care depending on what sort of insurance a person has um, and what setting they are giving birth in. There's so much care that goes into one course of midwifery care. Um, in the out-of-hospital setting that most midwives aren't able to be considered in network um, with an insurance company. Because if you're in network with an insurance company, you're deciding that you're agreeing that you will take whatever they'll offer you. And that is often $2,000 maybe for an entire course of care. Um, so most midwives in the out-of-hospital setting are working as out-of-network providers. So the client might have to give the whole amount of money, which will range, I mean, maybe from about five to $7,000 for a course of care, something like that in this area. It's very uh, area dependent, you know, which part of the country you are from. Um, in, but, in, but insurance will reimburse to some degree and sometimes very well. It might reimburse all of the money. Yeah. If you have a PPO insurance policy that covers well, it might reimburse the entire amount. If you have Medi-Cal, or some other kinds of insurance or an HMO insurance. Often HMO insurances won't cover anybody who's not in network. So it can be a little bit tricky to try to get some reimbursement, but almost, you know, often you can get some half to all of it back. I would say the birth center where I work right now, Pacifica Family Maternity Center in Berkeley, we have a real community approach and I think a lot of people are really drawn by that is what I see that we have a lot of groups we have some group prenatal visits we have um, a lot of postpartum it's kind of a vibrant place and I think some people are really drawn by that where home birth can feel almost too intimate for some people I feel like it's like wait you're coming to my house or I'm you know it's a lot of um, 
one-on-one. -on -one. And I think a lot of home birth midwives do pull together group prenatals. And, you know, usually they have smaller practices. You know, maybe you'll have three or four a month at the most. And so you're not having this, like, 10 families coming in every month with, like, all these babies and all these people in and out. So I, I feel like for us, the birth center... And even for myself as a midwife, I find that it's a vibrant, um, there's a lot of um, like communication and a lot of interesting collaboration that's happening in that space. So that's one reason I feel like people are there. Some people are worried about mess and cleanup. I, I do hear that from people, even though we do try to reassure them that at home we will clean, clean up the mess and protect your space. Some people like a team, like a whole team of midwives, like they feel like, okay, I'm not going to have anybody who's too tired. Like there's always going to be somebody there. There's going to be collaboration um, on my care. There's several tricky things about leaving your home in labor. I'm going to say one thing is that there's no interruption. When you're laboring at home, you have your own privacy, you get into your own rhythm, and then your care providers, if you're deciding to stay home and deliver your baby, give birth to your baby at home, you um, know that people will just come to you and you don't have to wonder when the perfect time is to leave or to get to the hospital or to the birth center without giving birth in the car or without going and being so early in labor that you actually are asked to maybe go home for longer. But if you're giving birth at home, you're all set up and it's your midwife who has to make that journey. So, you know, your midwife might check in on you at midnight and you might, things might kind of become kind of quiet with your labor and you might end up going back to sleep in your bed. And then either your midwife can sleep on the couch for a little bit or watch you for a little bit or just go home. And so there's much less disruption for the person giving birth. So we have four staff midwives who all share call. And then we have students, which is a really exciting part of it, too, that people really like. It's a training program for licensed midwives. And, um, and they're very involved and very enthusiastic. And, you know, it's really nice to have that learning environment. And then we have always community midwives who come as the assist. So at the births, we always have... Um, two midwives for the birth and usually two students who are kind of at wherever they are in their training they'll be one will be with the primary midwife and one will be with the assist midwife um, doing those roles and then um, we have usually the assist community midwives will do some of the postpartum care like the home postpartum care and then um, the staff midwives are always at the center so then the one week two week and six week visits are done back at the birth center there is a trade-off in risk in the hospital setting. You have higher risk of C-section, higher risk of infection, higher risk of intervention, um, but perhaps a lower risk of like one, a very unusual, very rapid um, emergency. You know, possibly there's those few emergencies that you might have a better outcome in the hospital, but most of those things we can kind of screen for and watch for. I'm a certified nurse midwife. I work with three licensed midwives. And in California, licensed midwives have more independent practice under the law than certified nurse midwives do. But certified nurse midwives kind of traditionally have um, more, um, like a few more um, abilities in our scope of practice. Like we can furnish or prescribe medications and licensed midwives can't. So that's one way that um, I'm supportive of the care on that team is I can prescribe if someone needs a little bit of antibiotics for their bladder infection or they need um, birth control or anything like that. So I, I can do that where the licensed midwives don't have that um, in their scope of practice and in California at least. But the licensed midwives, like Certified nurse midwives are supposed to have some sort of a relationship with a physician in order to be able to give those medications and in order to repair lacerations and things like that um, to be able to suture where licensed midwives don't have any restriction on their practice in that way. Basically, California is one of four states that um, 
necessitates physician supervision for a midwife, for a certified nurse midwife, to be able to practice. So it's quite a limitation on our ability to practice when um, most of the other states' midwives are considered autonomous, independent providers. And there's yeah. con continuous work. And there will continue to be work till we can change laws that make them more useful, where we can really increase access to midwifery care, which has been really proven to be um, a, a real important way to end some racial disparities in maternity care, in childbirth care, um, and just to really like close the gap of access to care where there are some people who just can't get good care and some people who are really seeking what midwives have to offer but they they can't really access a midwife because of some of the laws that are restricting our practice in this state. could have to do with implicit bias in the settings of care when they come in for care. Um, it could have to do with just not having providers that reflect a background that's similar so that people feel seen and heard appropriately. Um, it could just be pure access issues or people not being, yeah, maybe not being listened to the way they should be listened to. The Nurse Midwives Association is co-sponsoring a bill that is trying to get um, implicit bias training to be mandated for anybody who interacts with people in, in perinatal care. So anybody from the person at the front desk at the hospital to the midwife or the obstetrician caring for them would need to be doing a yearly implicit bias training to see if we could start to support and decrease some of these really negative outcomes. But, you know, there's also just the desire to really train people of color to be um, care providers so that people can be cared for by people who look a little bit more like them or, you know, just might come from a background that might be more similar. I think that um, childbirth, the same way that it kind of got taken from the home into the hospital and from the hands of women into the hands of men, it also got taken from immigrants and people of color. So I think it's the same battle that happened that midwives have struggled to have um, autonomous practice. So did midwives really lose the ability to practice just the skills that they knew from the community. And so I think that that's become a troublesome thing where that's when it became like a very white profession, like a white women's profession in midwifery. And um, I think now that we're seeing some of these disparities, a lot of schools and a lot of um, sites of education are really trying to say like, let's get this back into um, the hands of people of color as well. And, you know, all just so that we have a nice mix of people who can understand what the variety of needs are that are out in the community. Just having b midwives and all settings of birth being fully integrated into one health system, I think is huge. I think it would fix a lot of the problems that we have where um, even if, you know, maybe if we had a, a single payer type of nationalized healthcare system where we don't have to do all this finagling, like you can give birth there, you can give birth with that provider, you can go over there. Yeah, I picture it maybe like Canada where Midwives, they work in all the settings and then they can go and they have their hospital privileges if their client just needs some Pitocin augmentation or an epidural after a long, hard labor, they can follow them into the hospital and keep doing that care. Um, so there's just some unnecessary little glitches that happen that really end up hurting the client. You know, it doesn't, it's unpleasant for the midwife, but it's really just, just less safe for the client when they should be able to just get the care very easily that they deserve.